looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. Please hear me. There's a reason I'm sharing this. Uh, the very thing, ladies, that the world tells you to give a man before marriage so that you can keep him is the very thing that will cause you to lose him. Robert Morris, okay? This guy, uh, I'm not, I mean, to my knowledge, everything that I know about him, he's like a false teacher, okay? But, oh, he shouldn't be preaching to begin with, right? We understand that, but we have pulpit that I just, well, uh, compromise. So many pastors are mounting their pulpits. They shouldn't be on a pulpit to begin with, okay? So this is a guy. His name is Robert Morris. He is a senior pastor, okay? A former senior pastor, we have his resignation. I'm going to share that with you. He's a former pastor of Gateway Bible Church, a mega church out in Dallas, Texas. Apparently, their church see, um, has 100,000 people every week. So, you, I mean, I, it's the uh, biggest mega church in America. So, that explains, okay? So, but what is going on in Dallas? Because mm -hmm, Tony Evans is in Dallas. This guy is also in Dallas. So, we're going to cover it all. So, this gentleman... Robert Morris, uh, founding pastor of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, which attracts an estimated 100,000 worshipers weekly. Okay? I mean, just 100,000 worshipers. I mean, that's 100,000 uh, 100, churches right there with 1,000 members, which is a mega church. Okay? But it be that as it may. Anyway, he, uh, he has confessed to inappropriate... Uh, Behavior, you know, we are on YouTube with a young lady more than 35 years ago. While he was a young pastor, if a woman accused him of abusing her over multiple years beginning when she was 12. So this has been going on uh, ever since this young lady. The, I mean, like, according to him, he's calling this... Uh, this is calling the young, calling her a young lady at 12 years old, okay? At 12 years old, even today, that's a child, not a young lady. But in order for him to suit himself, he had to mention it in that way, okay? So we have a news clip for you uh, that, you know, this guy just outed himself, okay? So let's uh, take a look at what he shared, okay? So um, this is... Uh, no, let's break out. Let's break out. Let's break the news first. Okay. Let's break the news first. And then we'll, we'll tackle, uh, whatever he shared in another video. Okay. All right. So here is the news. Here we go. One of the largest churches in the Dallas area is responding to allegations that he molested a child in the 1980s. Robert Morris, who preaches at Gateway Mega Church, admitted he engaged in inappropriate sexual behavior, but he says he sought forgiveness and counseling. Reporter Matt Houston spoke with his accuser, who questions whether he is truly repentant. Cindy Clemeshire read from Genesis Sunday. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. That's the 54-year-old's prayer, that her story would bring about some good. She accuses Gateway Church pastor Robert Morris of molesting her from 1982 to 1987. The first time, she says, she was 12. Morris, a family friend, was in his early 20s, already married, already preaching. The story is gut-wrenching when I read it on paper, and I've been sharing for years. So it just happens to be God's time, I think, for it to come to light. In a statement, Morris admits to inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady, though he did not reference her age. It was kissing and petting, he said, and not intercourse, but it was wrong. In 1987, Clemishire says she told a family friend who told her to tell her parents. He didn't come forward and confess. He was turned in. And when someone's turned in, what are they sorry for? Are they sorry because they got caught? Or are they truly repentant of what they did? That's why she takes issue with Gateway Church elders who say Morris followed proper biblical steps and a lengthy restoration process. She says her family forgave Morris but never gave him their blessing to preach again. Morris claims they did. I think that leaders can get caught up in feeling like it's our responsibility to protect God, and it's not. 
their responsibility is to protect the people. Gateway Church elders say since the resolution of this 35-year-old matter, there have been no other moral failures. Pastor Robert has walked in purity and has placed accountability measures and people in his life. The matter has been properly disclosed to church leadership. That's the Old Testament verse. Let me show you New Testament verse. Morris did not preach Saturday. He'd already announced plans to turn over church leadership to his son next spring, though he said he would continue preaching some. Okay, so can you imagine that this is a situation... This is a situation that uh, they're having over there at Gateway. She did put up a very good question to ask. Are they, is this guy apologizing because he's remorseful or because he has repented? Or he's apologizing because he got caught, okay? So clearly, this was, uh, what, uh, you know, that was like 35 years ago in 1982, okay? A whole bunch of you over there, you were not born, okay? I wasn't born either. Yours truly, I wasn't born. But this is what this guy was doing. He was 20 years old when he he was family members of this um, couple, okay? And then this is the opportunity. They opened a the door to him and he had he ended up doing this despicable thing to this young lady when she was 12 years old according to her testimony she's been talking about this it's just now that the story has come to light now remember that according i guess we should just read this issue okay so that way you know we're just gonna tackle this issue the way it is being presented okay so this is there at uh this is the article that was put out by um christian post okay uh we're not gonna read it all of it but just the the highlights of it all okay it says, Morris accuser uh, Cindy Commissioner first told the World Bank Watch that he began abusing her on December 25, 1982, and continued with the abuse for four and a half years. After that, when contacted by CP on Saturday, the, the four-year-old grandmother confirmed the details in the report, but insisted she was no, she was no young when Morris began abusing her. So she said that she was 12, Okay. Now, uh, she said Morris began preaching at her church regularly on Sundays after he was invited to do a youth revival in a hometown in Oklahoma. So this was taking place in Oklahoma during in that, you know, in 1982. Okay. Then, and I quote here, the Morris family came to visit and spent time there, seeing they sat in the backseat of the car with Robert. He asked her to visit him in his room that night. She shared a room with her sister. Cindy, an innocent 12-year-old girl, movingly described what she was wearing. She was wearing a pink pajama with a broomer pants. She wore uh, underwear underneath. She had a snap-up rub on and water bag, okay? She thought nothing of a visiting family friend in their bedroom. He told her to lie down on her back and touch her stomach, okay? So, the, I mean... So this is what this guy was doing, okay? I'll leave the link, you guys, you'll be able to read it. However... Um, so, and then this, I caught over here. He says, so this guy ended up saying that he was, he had to step down from ministry. Okay. All this is in the article. Okay. Obviously we, we're going to go through article tonight. So he, when he was confronted, he ended up stepping down. Okay, and he stepped down for what? For two years. And his testimony is that he apologized to the family and the father gave him a blessing to, uh, uh, he had th he threatened him. You either step down or I'm going to report you to the police. So this was already known to the elders. Okay, but now this is where we have the problem, guys. Okay. So if you compare and contrast, okay, even the situation that we have with Pastor Tony Evans, right? The procedure that he's doing is the procedure that this guy took, okay? Uh, he, he stepped down. The elders were aware, and he was restored back to the ministry. So according to the standards that this, I call it this, the tradition that we, we, we have manufactured, right? Like, okay, somebody is going to step down. After some time, they're going to be restored back to ministry, okay? I don't believe. Once you're an elder, you're disqualified, you're done. So this guy did everything. The elders knew about it. 
he was uh, he stepped down he was restored back to ministry so why are they out here wanting this guy to resign because he did the procedure as he was requested according he, he repented you see what i'm saying but now it's just like okay no this guy has to step down why why should he step down if we believe the procedure is you you step down you get restored you get back to ministry right but that's not what happened now you have the father, okay? Now this is the problem now with the jurisdiction. You, God has three government, right? The family, government, and the church. So all these fears, they can overlap, but there's a responsibility, okay? The father knew about this. It was not his responsibility to tell him that you need to step down because now you're going to the ecclesiology, okay? The father has no authority to tell him to step down. The church does. The authority that the dad had was to report him to the government because the government bears the sword. His responsibility is to protect his family. As such, you report him to that, okay? He gets reported to the church. The church will exercise our discipline. So if this guy had been reported according to the authorities, he would have gone to jail. But guess what? Even if he had gone to jail, right? By now, he would have been out. So he goes to jail. He saved whatever, 15 years, let's just say. And then he comes out. What do you have? Okay, he, he repented. He went to jail. He paid his dues. Now you're putting him back to the ministry. Why not? According to the standard that we are espousing these days. But if we just stick to the scriptures, okay? Anybody who does this to a child... Jesus is clear on that, okay? Jesus no, is not playing games on that one, okay? So what does Jesus say on this issue, okay? So Matthew 18, 5, okay? Whoever receives, uh, whoever receives one such a child in my name receives me. Verse 6, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be, and be drowned in in the depth of the sea. That's what the word of God demands. Okay? But we have arrived. We we have our own standards. We no longer believe in the scriptures. Okay? So if this guy had been reported to the authorities, goes to court, they do an investigation, okay? Receives a fair trial. The sentence should have been death penalty. And this would have taken place in 1982. You wouldn't have heard about it. I wouldn't have heard about it. If anything, he would have been a poster preacher. That if preachers do this, they end up on the death penalty. Okay, so shout out to Nashville. You do this, the sentence is death penalty. Nashville, uh, Tennessee has, has that. Okay, now the governor has signed it, which is good. But we are so holy, like, no, we don't believe in death penalty anymore. So this guy is roaming around the streets from 1982 to up to now. What else has he done? How are we honestly, this was just a one off according to the situation. It was over four and a half years. You see what I'm saying? When you read people go off and be to what God has already articulated. If we follow what God has said, this situation, we wouldn't be here. But yeah, here we are. That's why I'm saying. Right now, people be like, oh, we don't need to know what Pastor Evans did. Okay, he can be restored back to ministry and everything, right? But the scripture is not saying restoring the person to the ministry. You are restoring the person in the right standing uh, with God. He's not going to lose his salvation. But you know, sin separates you from God, right? You experience the dry season. So you are restoring that person into their spiritual lifestyle, not restoring them to the position that they forfeited by their misbehavior. An elder must be above reproach. And... Even in the, uh, when he was busy causing this little one to stumble, right? You know, sinning against this little girl when she was 12. He actually told her, like, you know what? Don't tell anybody. Why? Because I could lose everything. So this, um, this criminal knew that he could lose everything, knew what he was doing was wrong, but he did it anyway. Okay? So a momentary uh, satisfaction. He was willing to do that. And he never stopped. Four and a half years, he continued to do that. You see? And he cleaned himself up. Now he has over 100,000 people in his congregation that come in, come in and out weekly. You see what I'm saying? I mean, why? Did we have to get over here? So this is, this is what happens, right? When sin is not dealt with, okay? So, yes, you know, the father should have reported this to the police. And yes, the guy can repent. You can repent the church can minister to you. The church can still do those things. But you 
have to bear the sword. You have to face the sword. That's just how things work, right? That doesn't mean that, you know, there's no sin that is beyond redemption. But we shouldn't shortcut what God has commanded. So this gentleman has decided to resign. Okay? He has resigned effective today. Uh, he was still listed uh, on the website. I'm sure it will take time f- for them to, to get rid of him um, on, uh, on the website. And then he is given the keys to who? To his son. Okay? I don't know about his son. Is his son qualified to be an elder? Are you just giving in? Like, what is this? This is a church. Okay? This is not like a dynasty, like your business. Like, okay, I'm, I'm leaving my inheritance to my son. So now the son is going to take over. Okay? If the son is, is qualified, is above reproach and everything, okay, I have no problem with that. But we know these people do these churches as a business. Okay? So you're just passing the torch to your son. And then he's going to pass it on to the grandson and everything else. Are those children called to the ministry? If they are, by all means. If not, why do we have that situation? But... Let's listen in to him now skipping town, okay? He, does, he doesn't want to face the music. You know, he quickly just resigned. So let's listen in. We begin with a shakeup in South Lake. The fallout from the resurfaced allegations has been swift. Robert Morris is the founder of Gateway Church, one of the largest churches in the country. Upon news that he was stepping down, church elders who initially defended him now say they didn't have all the facts. Let's get straight to our Andrea Lucia, who has been following the story and was among the first to learn of Morris's resignation. What's the latest, Andrea? Yeah, the now former pastor of Gateway Church, Robert Morris, admitted over the weekend to what he called an inappropriate sexual relationship. Church elders at the time told us this happened more than 35 years ago and that it had been properly disclosed to them. In a statement that came out within just the last hour or so, they now say they did not know the victim was only 12 years old or that the abuse lasted more than four years. They say their prior understanding was that Morris's extramarital relationship, which he discussed many times throughout his ministry, was with a young lady and not abuse of a 12-year-old child. That's the same term, by the way, Morris used in a statement just this weekend, young lady. Well, take a look at this picture of Cindy Clemeshire at the age of 12. This is who we are talking about. She says that Morris's accounts of what happened suggest she was older than she was and that he was younger. In a sermon Morris gave 10 years ago, you can hear him discuss his sexual immorality as a teen. I learned to lie and manipulate. Uh, because I also had rejection, uh, I didn't want to be rejected. So I looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. At the time of Clemeshire's alleged abuse, Morris was in his 20s and already married. Clemeshire says that for many years she felt responsible and embarrassed. With age, she says she's learned better and gained the courage to speak out. Has my mindset shifted? Yes. I'm not to blame. I shouldn't have shame on me. I don't. I don't live in shame anymore. Church elders initially told us that Morris was being open and forthright about what they called uh, his moral uh, failure. They have now hired a law firm to review uh, the chain of events between 1982 to 1987 to make sure that they do have a full understanding of what happened. They say uh, of of what they've learned so far in just the last few days, though, uh, it has them uh, appalled and heartbroken. And by the way, as soon as we learned about Morris's resignation, I reached out to Clemeshire to break the news to her. She responded with just one word. Wow. Okay, so another problem that we have over here, okay? The elders, according to them, themselves, they heard the story from this uh, from Morris, right? And they, according to them, right, they just believe whatever uh, Morris told them, that, okay, it was with a young woman and everything, okay? Even if it was a young woman, this guy was already married, Okay, so you cannot be having an appropriate relationship with somebody who is not your wife. And when these elders were presented this uh, information with Robert Morris, why didn't they investigate? Because you cannot just hear one side of a story. This guy wants to hold the office. That's not how you do. Okay, okay, this is your story, Morris. All right, that's fine. Now, we also want to hear the side of the story of that woman. What if Morris was, was lying? You see what I mean? But because they neglected their responsibility, and here we are. Not only that, they say now they want to hire a firm to investigate their responsibility, their, their duty as elders. Look, what are we doing out here? Okay, that's your responsibility as an elder to take care of the sheep, to keep an eye of the sheep. The lawyers, that's not their job. Okay, that's not their job. So once again, they failed. And now they've quickly 
you know, force this guy to resign, obviously, because because of the backlash. That's not how the church should operate. It doesn't matter what the world may say, whether true or false. They are required to operate things in a biblical way, not in a reaction way. So clearly, they also failed to exercise judgment. So according to them, they agreed that this guy repented, he was restored. So why are they, why are they sending him home? Why are they kicking him out of, uh, out of worship, out of the church? What standard did they use to restore him? Because if you believe what you did was God honoring, was uh, according to the scriptures, it doesn't matter if the whole world is against you. You see what I'm saying? Because you are standing on the truth of the scriptures. But if the world comes in, this me, two people come in, then what are we going to be doing? Okay? If you're standing here, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you'll be fine. You absolutely be fine. But because they decided to do things the way they wanted to do, now the rooster is coming home to roost. So now they are panicking. They're doing whatever they're doing. You see? Oh, we restored him. Well, if you restored him, then why are you firing him? Let him continue being uh, in the office. After all, he paid his dues, right? So this is what happens, okay? I know, like, okay, you know, we, we love our pastors and everything, right? We don't want them to go because we'll be like, okay, we are also sinners. We can be forgiven and everything. You, the consequences of sin remain, okay? This guy wouldn't be hired in anywhere else, you know? You cannot be a school superintendent. You cannot be a teacher. You cannot be, none of those jobs will be available for him because of his history. But the pulpit is wide open for him. Somebody who takes care of your soul. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe it. Okay? I cannot believe it. But also, one thing that I've noticed, when people are doing things that are up to no good, it's like they out themselves. Okay? So, take a listen to, uh, to this clip over here. Okay? They looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. Please hear me. There's a reason I'm sharing this. Uh, the very thing, ladies, that the world tells you to give a man before marriage so that you can keep him is the very thing that will cause you to lose him. There you have it. Okay? So um, what he's saying, like, you know, he's teaching everybody is, is quiet over there. He's saying these are the things that he used to do in the past. Okay? You know, people, we all have our past and everything. But... The question would be, okay, was that when you were a pastor or before you were a pastor? Before you came to Christ or not? And apparently he's put all those things in a book. So I'm sure there's more that this guy has done. But once again, all these things, to be quite honest with you, those things would have been avoided if the right uh, things would have happened. If the right things would have happened. Report him, Okay. Because should we say this is the only woman that he's done this to? According to him, he's, he, he has stayed pure. But, you know, who knows? We don't know, right? This, this is the one, um, only one uh, who has come out. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.